But we want to have a chat today about the role of transportation and how we build our cities and how we plan for our cities and how it's all connected. So this master plan sets the policies and the projects to inform how we build, maintain and administer all the ways that we move goods and people within our city boundaries. Things are changing really quickly now. Technology is changing quickly, quickly and we have to make sure that our policies and our infrastructure can support this change in a timely manner. We all move and increasingly our jobs, increasingly our education, increasingly our family lives involve increasing amounts of travel. We haven't yet gotten to a point where we're able to accept that the transportation system that we currently have isn't working, but we're almost clinging to it because it's what we know. Cycling as well as every mode of transportation benefits when we can have a transportation plan that prioritizes the movement of people, no matter what mode of transportation they're in, versus the movement of cars. Transportation is one of the sectors that is a principal contributor to climate change. Figuring out how to make sure that we can make sure that transportation is carbon neutral, if not carbon positive, while also being safe and permitting a flourishing economy is a difficult problem, but I can't think of a more pressing and important one for us to solve. Nancy, what do you think the challenges are of planning for the type of environment or the type of society that it fosters? One of the things that we've, we've looked at is where there's the best potential for actually shifting trips. In the Toronto region, about a third of trips are under five kilometers. And five kilometers is a really very easy bike trip. It can't be your neighbor who makes the change. It's you that has to make the change. Everyone in this room or the households to which the people in this room belong have to make changes in their behavior. Because where we choose to live means that's where we have to start so many trips to access everything else we want to do, whether it's school or work. Your housing choice inherently influences all your transportation choices. Can we imagine a future of public transit that is both multimodal in the sense of being able to bring your bike, being able to connect with other networks. Maybe autonomous shuttles will give us an opportunity to go point to point travel where one point is a transit hub. There will always be a place for on high density routes, buses or light rail or even subways operating at its own right of way. That will always be with us, even in a world where autonomous vehicles are cheap and convenient because it'll never be faster or more efficient than to do it with transit. But to make transit uh, really successful, your land use has to be also uh, in the right place. Station areas has to be multimodal, obviously it's very accessible, but station is always far away for some people, and uh, we can see senior citizens and visibility and other types of people uh, with their keys, with their grocery, uh, it's very difficult last meter. So if you want to see transit as successful, you have to make a multimodal option also as successful. You can be in the southern division of Mississauga and simply not have access to, to a liter of milk. You can't get there without getting in your car and driving for 10 or 15 minutes. There's just no way to get milk or to get any household supply because we've separated land uses. So we can talk about getting to multimodalism. We can talk about having uh, really nice integrated hubs. But at the same time, we're still building systems that are actually precluding interactions and including access. So here is a very simple one is bike share. We are in our neighborhood making sure that bike share and scooter share and e-bike share is ubiquitous and is certainly co-located with the bus stop and the LRT stop. If Guelph creates this transportation plan, how can it be responsive? When we build our transportation networks in a way that force us to be dependent on a car, we're creating an inherently unequal transportation mm -hmm. network. There's, um, consistently a uh, missed opportunity when we have big transit projects. Um, there's, like from the get-go, we should be like, when we're doing a big transit project, what's our walking and cycling plan for getting people to transit? And it's typically not what we do. It's, mm -hmm. There's this kind of idea because walking and cycling and you know pedestrian and, and cycling infrastructure is relatively cheap. It's, there's not much to it, you just like, you know, it's, that it's, we'll think about that later. Once we get this really complicated project done, we just <laughs> need to s switch that around and, and say, you know, this is, we need to think about that from the beginning. Thoughts on the way in which a transportation plan or evolving transportation infrastructure can best serve an aging population. One of the uh, very uh, car oriented city in Germany, 
tried that. What they did, they actually equally distributed the car share and also a different kind of transportation system for seniors, for almost every senior uh, centers to be picked up for, uh, for example, the shuttle bus that, uh, that Andrew is talking about. Uh, a combination of those two. Uh, over a month, they changed almost one third of the city, switched to car share or a service. Go to that city today, over 60% is actually not using cars. Urban data is really important. To manage a city well, you're going to need to collect it. So how do you do that if people can't opt out? The answer is, is that urban data is so important, no private company should own it. It'll go to a public data trust. That urban data is a public good. Therefore, it should be owned and controlled by the public. You could have a kiosk or you could have a transportation real-time data display on your uh, building entrances everywhere. So you don't actually need data for a smartphone. Digital real-time data display should be part of the development mm -hmm. and it should be viewable mm -hmm. from anywhere, whether mm -hmm. it's with users. When you do see elected officials in your community standing up for issues that you care about, be it transit or cycling or affordable housing, celebrate that and make mm -hmm. sure that they know that the community appreciates the, the political will that they are showing by supporting that issue. I know how municipal transportation planning in Southern Ontario works. And it is very heartening to me to see the city of Guelph doing what it's doing tonight, by having a public meeting and seeing so many residents come out to it. If it was business as usual, if you were happy with the way things are, you wouldn't be here. And then we need you to be here. That, that last message you heard, so when we've implemented road diets, you know what happens. Uh, sometimes the negative Nellies show up, and this is the wrong thing to do. And council needs to hear from the folks that actually want these things. They need to hear that in a very positive way.